Welcome back everyone to episode 39 of Let's Play Rule the Waves as Germany. So, excuse me, I think things have been going okay in this war overall. We did have that really massive blunder, um, but we kind of made up for it in the last episode. We just were able to pick off a battlecruiser and send a few of their other ships. I think a battle battleship and a destroyer is what we sank, but we also pretty heavily damaged one of their um, battle another one of their battle cruisers. We're hoping for more of that because again, um, just like the almanac shows, we're not doing amazing in terms of overall ships. Actually, if you look at things the way they are exactly right now, we're 11 to 11, so maybe we are starting to round the corner. However, the blockade is uh, never ending. We're still blockaded, so that's not good. The interesting thing is, although they blockaded us the whole time, I, I guess that's true with any historical war with um, Great Britain and Germany. We're still doing very well in victory points overall. So maybe you can think of it this way if we thought of it in a historical, um, in a historical respect. Usually Germany's goal was just to be able to leave port freely, <laughs> to be able to have free movement of their ships and not to seek a huge engagement with Great Britain, which they thought that they would lose because Great Britain just had more ships. So um, their objectives were usually just to, to eke out some small victories or um, not to get caught in a huge engagement. Let's say we'll push, let's do this one because again, this game is over as soon as this war is end, uh, ends. They sunk three ships, it's not good. Our unrest is still only three and we have put a little bit. What? Oh my gosh, well that, is not good. One of our battle cruisers has been sunk. Wow, that was very unexpected, but we'll have to live with it. Okay, a cruiser battle. We have much better cruiser stuff, so we gained zero victory points for them declining. This is, the game is turning against us. All right, well, we have three dreadnoughts, they have nine, but we have four battle cruisers. It is pretty close to friendly waters for us. This is probably another good engagement for us to take. So without further ado, I guess we just jump right into, the, into battle. Why is it that we don't have all of our dreadnoughts there? It says we only have three, but I'm counting. Oh yeah, the Deutschland class is a little bit depleted because two of our dreadnoughts, if I just look naively, two of our dreadnoughts are um, over invading places in Asia. Okay, so yeah, one of them is important and three of them are available for action against nine. If it is nine to seven, I'm okay with that because we will have a massive numbers advantage. Let's find out. Okay, so this is the same thing as what happened previously. Um, uh, this is way back. Maybe this is in my war against France or a different fleet even, where we had two different groups, our main this is probably our dreadnought fleet, yep. And this is probably our battle cruiser fleet. And there they are. Okay, good. So, yeah, let's just get into it then, I guess. Are we going to encounter the enemy before, or do we have free movement? Nope, looks like we'll encounter the enemy before anything happens. Okay, well, let's just move forward until that happens and uh, react accordingly. Okay, so. I'm hoping that this is just their battle cruiser scouting fleet, but that might not be the case. In fact, I think they only had one battle cruiser, so already we see this is probably not just. Oh boy. And the Nuremberg is a Danzig class. That's expendable, but the Stetton is. Okay, these guys are all Danzig class. And obviously the Danzig is Danzig class. Alright, so let's have these guys form up. Their scouting mission is complete. Line ahead, squad max, turn away. We want to lure the fleet, obviously. There's a moderate breeze out of the west, so we want to be on the east side of them, which the good news is, is where our fleet is coming from. I'm not going to bother with scouting with these guys. Let's get everyone into line ahead, flank speed. We have to um, basically close the distance as fast as possible. A lot of our firepower is over here, unfortunately. 
Squad max, squad max, squad max. Okay, this guy I'm gonna slow down to 25 or so and angle him a little bit down. I think this is, if I see that they can go 34, I'm presuming that they are the, the best class. It's a funny name. <laughs> you, know, you, you don't realize that when you name a design how often you're gonna have to say that word. <laughs> so this is probably the S13 group because I see they only have a max speed of, huh. It's one of these guys. There's an S13. Yeah, because their max speed is only 33, not 34. That difference kind of is telltale that they are not the, the best class. But I will also keep this group close at hand. These will be my two protection destroyers or reserve destroyer fleet that I can send in later. And these guys will be my kamikaze group. Okay, that's probably about the angle we want. Actually, maybe even just straight ahead you're probably moving the right way that's not probably don't have to turn too much you guys will come in a little bit and what are you this is another is the best class yep very good we'll take you away from their screening duties though and we'll also get you into a support role and you guys will move uh now we'll probably have you go 25 as well just to move down there you guys should go squad max we need to get you into the action as fast as possible in fact i'll just like click down here to make sure that that's the way the way they're headed. Okay, the MDIN, what are you? You are a Dresden class, so you will be my support light cruiser. We might end up just kind of launching the Madgeburg or any of these guys. Madgeburg and Dresden, that's kind of ones I would like to keep. Those are experienced cruisers to boot. Okay, this is a Hamburg class, so we'll have the Munchen also, um, and the Munchen and her group, they will also launch themselves into the fray as fast as possible. So how do we want to do this? Well, if we look at visibility, just uh, just turn on visibility for a second. Visibility is decent. What is the distance? Okay, this is, uh, it says the distance from my ship here. Unfortunately, I have a hard time converting from nautical miles into yards. Uh, what is it like? 1600 yards per mile? I, I don't remember. This is the real downside with the Imperial system is it's not exactly easy to remember. So I think it's around 1600, so that means uh, six times 1600. Oh God, it's about 100, uh, so 10,000. So they're like 10,000 yards away, is that true? Huh, no, it can't be, because our firing range, oh, yeah. Our firing range is longer than our visibility, and our firing range is 1,500. Yeah, so I guess it is about right. It's about 10,000. Good little math in my head. Let's put all this stuff back, though. Okay, torpedoes. We don't need to know torpedo range. Everything is torpedo range at this point in the war, so I'm just going to leave that toggled off to avoid a little bit of the confusing circles. Let's get these guys to blow smoke. Yeah, we, we're in trouble. So what do we have here? These guys are all the S13 class. I'm just gonna immediately put them on um, AI control and have them just go immediately into battle. Okay, yep. Now, how do we do this? Who leads and who follows? Well, we need to go max speed to the east. So I guess that means that the Gobin will fall in behind the Hindenburg line. And what are you? You are Sebastian and S13. Probably I also send you guys into the fray. I mean, basically I have to suicide uh, destroyers, which I'm numerically far superior in, in order to counteract their dreadnought advantage. And these guys, uh, I can't believe we lost one to a mine. You know, having five versus four here, it seems like it's only a 20% increase in firepower or 25% increase in firepower, but it, it just feels more it, If you have five, I don't know. It's a It's a comforting fact Plus the way we lost that was just kind of silly, but okay All right. Well, let's um, start getting move on and see how our ooh. Well, that is not a good start Stetton and Nuremberg are laying smoke the Danzig just decided She's too good for her our orders, I guess. I don't think there's anything we should do quite yet, though, so. 
Let's just have everything work the way it is. And our fleets are moving. So we unfortunately have to split our attention between the two fleets. Ah, oh, the Nürburgring is launching torpedoes. This is very good, actually. Potentially very helpful. Yeah, this is definitely their huge line. Even the fatigable class. Oh boy, that is a very strong dreadnought. Very strong. Yeah, we need to we need to flee to our protective dreadnought group. Oh, the Nuremberg is actually broken off. Why is that? Well, since you've broken off, let's have you flee immediately back, and you should still be laying smoke. <clears throat> we'll have the Stetton. We want to draw them to the east. And the good news for us, if we want to continue this battle, is that it's just turned day. I prefer fighting in day. I feel a little more comfortable, even though they probably have the numerical superiority, which means it's better for us to fight in less visible conditions. I'm going to take it. I think we'll, we can win this fight, especially because we are launching a gosh darn ton of torpedoes. And maybe we get lucky. This is not, of course, a very good start for that. <laughs> oh, the Stetton is just getting wrecked. And you guys, this is not even visible for you, huh? Uh, it's a tough call. Do you risk your battle cruisers by moving them into sight range? I think we want to move them just to the very tip of visibility. Okay, our visibility has expanded. I'm assuming that our ships are going to start firing. Okay, maybe a one more turn. Oh boy, machinery damage. This is not good. So the Nuremberg is probably not going to survive. Her max speed is now 13. Well, hopefully she can just get off a few more of her torpedoes in the meantime. She's already launched three of them starboard. It's crazy, but uh, just assuming we're not going to make it, I'm going to turn her hard to port, and we'll see if we can get off um, some of our port side torpedoes before she goes down. She's basically going to act as a uh, covering for the Stetton and the Danzig over here, which I don't know. The Danzig, in order to get into line, has actually been stupid and is going the wrong way, but maybe the Nuremberg's... Uh, maybe we'll even turn the Nuremberg... Uh, it's hard to say. I think this is better. It'll take longer for her to get to port, but she's going slow, so maybe the turning will happen a little faster. I don't know. Okay, visibility's great, so now we just move. Uh, yeah, now we don't care <laughs> about trying to close. We just move. Unfortunately, ships are following the range. <sighs> Firing ship turning is worse. Smoke interference is minus 20. I wish that smoke interference was actually working in our favor for the ship for firing here, but okay, Dan's exhaustion torpedoes, this is all good stuff. We might get lucky with a few here. Dan's a critical hit. Alright, well we these guys are not uh you know priority number one. Just give Nuremberg a good broadside range. Give the Stetton a good broadside range. These guys are now engaging fully. Okay, that is a lot of dreadnoughts. Yes, it is. <laughs> that is a lot of dreadnoughts. Okay, well, we're finally starting to return fire. And the good news is they are not... Ooh, the Indefatigable is getting a broadside off. I mean, these 16-inch guns, I don't have that much armor. Ten of them. Interesting. Doesn't look like our torpedoes are going to hit, unfortunately. Okay, well, that is a very good barrage from the Hindenburg. Unfortunately, they have such strong armor. And which one are they hitting? Indefatigable. Well, we did disable one of their turrets. Now they're getting a full broadside off. Oh, okay. Well, what do we have going on here? Yeah, they're going to run into this fleet, and we want to be... Yeah, this is good. I think this is good. Let's try to set an intercept course. And I wasn't really paying attention for a while, and our destroyers are crossing lines. That's actually fine. I don't know why these guys, I must have mistakenly dr driven them that way. But this fine, this is fine. Get those guys. Probably don't go flank speed with this group, because they're going to be, I think, support. Magdeburg, yeah. And the Munchen's allowed to go flank speed. Yeah, that's right. Did I? I didn't set you off into line ahead mode yet. Okay, good. There it is. All right. 
So survive, this is the important thing. Survive just for a little bit longer. Survive until we can join our dreadnoughts. Unfortunately, that's uh, immediately after that. I, we take some hits. We're surviving though, I, if that's the name of the game. All right, I, I hate to do this, but um, Stetton, you're now, you're just expendable. You're very expendable. Don't lay smoke, just go into the fray. Remember, did you already launch your torpedoes? No, your port side torpedoes are just ready. Let's maybe angle you so you can lead them. Okay, two more penetrating hits. They are spreading the love out. That doesn't look right. Okay, that's what it's supposed to look like. Oh, good. We, we did get lucky with a, a torpedo hit. Now, we're, we'd be naive to think that one torpedo hit is going to do anything to these guys, really. <clears throat> they probably have very good torpedo protection. So we have to be careful. All right. We're getting hit by heavy guns. That means 16 inches. Hmm. The Gobin... Ah, lost speed. Okay, pull up then. Pull up and away. <laughs> this is what happens when you put destroyers on AI control. They just totally screw with your targeting. Probably should just force them to do what I wanted them to do, but uh, it's too late. To, that decision should have been made already. It's too late. Wow, Tiger class. What the heck is that? Wow. Not... It's nothing good. Okay, the Nurmberg did launch her torpedoes, it looks like now, so she has two left, but that's good enough. Let's just try to get her out, out of here as fast as possible. Wow, okay, very lucky. We're launching a lot of torpedoes. We, we are hitting the indefatigable. We did kill the New Zealand class. That's amazingly lucky. This is another thing that is historically accurate, at least, or we can pretend. This is a... I mean, we've gone like 25 years in a break from history, but historically, the German gunners were extremely accurate, and uh, uh, in one-on-one -on -one engagements or in equal-numbered engagements, they typically came out ahead. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that that's modeled into the game. We're lucky. This is very lucky that we got this kill on the on the New Zealand. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if it will be enough. We have to make sure that... A light cruiser division is interfering. We actually do want them on this side. Oh, they need to move a little faster. Because that's going to be the outside, not obstructing the dreadnoughts from firing when we actually make it over to the enemy fleet. Good. So maybe get you to go 26 so you can actually let the Colbert catch up. Seton, you don't have any starboard torpedoes, if I'm, if I'm guessing correctly. Oh, you, you do. You've only launched one torpedo. Well... Let's continue that. Sacrifice anything to save battlecruisers. Okay, so what do we have left now? Danzig is launching her torpedoes. That's great. Keep doing that. Keep doing your thing, Danzig. You're just sitting there playing possum. She's playing possum just to let them close so that we can get off a few more torpedo hits. That's the game, right? Maybe. Okay, Moki took a hit. She's still able to go 24, so that's not bad. Danzig is hopefully going to repair. Whoops. Nope, still not repaired. It would be nice, somebody mentioned that it would be nice if they had a pop-up that says your engines have been repaired, because they don't automatically re-engage their engines. Their speed stays at zero until, one, their engine is repaired, and two, you have to manually increase it again. It would just make sense if they increased their speed as soon as they had engines back automatically. Okay, so now we're hitting the resolution. She didn't have any enough damage to, to knock out any of her turrets, but we have done some sizable damage, considerable damage to the indefatigable. Indo <laughs> that one ends up being a tough one for me to pronounce. <sighs> okay, tiger class, very scary. Hood class, which is extremely scary if I don't... I think these had quality one, and look at that turret armor. We're not gonna get too many flash fires on the hood. But, oh, a turret destroyed, that's also not good. But that's kind of fair, uh, a fair exchange that we knock out their turrets, they knock out ours. 
get the Gobin to... Gobin is still able to move almost full speed, yeah. So that's fine. So we're kind of, without a good reason, obstructing the, the view. Uh, that's okay, though. Maybe we'll turn the Mulky to get them back into line. Uh, it says the Gobin is only doing 20, though. Okay, yeah, in that case, continue. Steady as she goes. Okay, another turret destroyed. Not good. Danzig turret disabled, but eh. Since she can't... Um, I'm moving somebody else. Whoops. Let's have the Stetton. Stetton is still not launching torpedoes. We need you to maintain your speed, to be honest. Looks like the Nuremberg is going to get away. <laughs> it's remarkable. She's even engaging destroyers, like I would definitely like her to do. And our destroyers are making their run. This is the perfect time because we're starting to lose the engagement. Starting to get hits against us. That Tiger class is so scary. Okay, we are able to get, well, minor hit against the Indefatigable. God, don't make me say that again. Still good damage there. The resolution class took one more hit, but not enough to damage the turrets. They have an uncanny ability to... Oh, boy. All right, Mulkey, we need you to just uh, all speed away. Turn away. I think um, turning away should kind of limit the ability for them to hit you, but I don't think it works that way. Well, she got hit severely again. The problem is if we slow her down, this is always the problem. If you slow her down, she's more likely to be hit again. This is a big dilemma. Do you slow her down so that she doesn't take um, as much flotation damage, but she possibly gets pounded by more shells? Or do you just run her flank speed at the, at the risk of increasing flooding just to get her out of range? I'm going to do the, the latter. I'm going to run her at high speed out of range as fast as possible. So we'll let the Gobin kind of sit in and start firing. Hopefully that turns out to be their number one target. Hopefully all this turning because of the torpedoes will limit their ability to fire, but so far, surprisingly, I would say surprisingly, they are able to hit pretty well, despite all the, I mean, look at their turning and stuff. It, it, they don't have any kind of accuracy like this, so they shouldn't. Okay, the Hindenburg has uh, a turret destroyed now. She's operating with less than her maximum. <sighs> we really could use some of these torpedoes to connect. I feel like the torpedoes hit when I don't watch them. It's like a watch pot never boils. Um, a watch torpedo never hits. Got two hits. Good turn overall. I know, I know, Mulkey. I, I mean, I wish, I wish I knew what to do. How's that flooding? It's 177. I think you can make it, though. Your mission still has to be to just get the hell out of here as fast as possible, I think. I don't I don't think that we're doing the wrong thing. Another turret top hit. We have very low turret top armor. If I'm not mistaken, it's like 2.5. Okay, well, the Gobin's back in range. We, we do have our, tor our torpedo runs are being made, though. And their torpedo boats are moving to intercept, which should be a huge advantage for us because our... Um, we have light cruisers and they don't. We also have a lot of 5-inch guns. I mean, there's lots of reasons why I think we will win if it comes down to the effectiveness of small ships, despite the fact that I can't seem to land a torpedo to save my life. Okay, let's look away so we don't see the torpedoes. <laughs> maybe they'll hit. And maybe I'm watching too much. Oh, uh, well, Danzig. Surprisingly, the Danzig is not sunk yet. You know, she's just sitting here in the middle of nowhere. Still can't move, so it's not like we can do anything about it in any way. Getting these guys out of here, and the Munchen is starting to make her way into sight, which is good. Good timing. Okay. We have to lead these guys, so... Yeah, I think that's still about right. This is a group with Squad Max of 29, so they need to get into the fray as fast as possible. This is a group of 33, but I think that we just decided they're going into the fray as fast as possible. We're kind of leaving our... I wasn't paying attention to the Dreadnought fleets, but we had we have some, some some issues here, obviously. Okay. A how hit. 
Oh, just with the six inch guns. All right. I'm sorry. It's impressive that you're hitting them. That's, I'd like to applaud you, but you're probably not going to be doing much against this kind of armor with your uh, six inch guns. So lots of torpedoes look away. Maybe they will hit, uh, the Nuremberg. She's finally, uh, starting to see the end of her days. Lots of hits on the Vonderton. Not good, but she's surviving. She's a survivor. Okay, a London hit. I don't even know what the London looks like. Wow, enough to disable a 16-inch turret. Strange design, huh? You have four triple turrets and one double turret dead center of the ship. <laughs> well, the World War I design was a little chaotic like that. Sometimes they would do designs that didn't really make that much sense, so... So it makes sense that it doesn't make sense. <laughs> okay, lots of destroyers getting their butts kicked. The Stetton has actually somehow miraculously survived this entire engagement. Wow. I applaud your effort. And you have only port side, so let's, uh, let's do some maneuvering. Let's do some maneuvering. Let's get you to go... Let's swing you around this way to get your port side and swing you back... Now at this point, we're gonna start angling down. These guys are fine. Okay, you're out of range, so let's um, actually slow you down to 12 and bring you back this way. You might still be able to contribute a little bit, but only from a distance. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Still all the torpedoes, I have only seen one hit. I mean, it's because we weren't looking, right? What do we have going on here? Whoops. Just carnage, chaos. More chaos than carnage. Okay, that's good. What are you guys doing right over there? I don't even know. Don't know, don't care. Okay, the Stetton is turning back, so let's have you run this way. There you go. Wow, we hit! Yes, we were not looking and we, we hit. <laughs> That's good. Nuremberg looks like she's getting out okay. Danzig, we never we never had much hope for you. <laughs> it was always a, a losing affair. So a hit on the Hindenburg, a penetrating hit. Another hit on the London. Still just the one turret. Ooh, that looked like a hit, but it wasn't because I watched it. Dang it. Went right through the hole. I, I hate watching the torpedoes. It seems like they should be hitting. Okay. These guys are basically in range, so we need to start arcing down. Which means that you guys have to arc even harder away so that you don't obstruct the range. Okay, these guys are fodder. Not a good turn for us. If they can just focus on the Danzig, I will be happy with that, though. Are you able... No, you're still not able to do anything. They're still firing at their destroyers, which is good. Should give us supremacy. Okay, again, by not looking, we were able to hit a ship. It, at this angle, can you imagine a ship being hit by a torpedo? Their torpedo production wasn't by their propeller. That would do such damage to them. Probably knock out their, their propellers. I mean, I'm serious. It would probably knock out their propulsion. But we don't have that modeled in quite that way. You guys are almost there. Let's have you guys turn back in. We just want you at the, at the farthest range possible. No, 14, let's say. Let's do some kind of compromise. A little bit below crew speed. Flooding is almost taken care of, but we know that returning to high speed can cause further flooding. We want to be at the fringe of firing range, because that means some of their ships will actually be beyond our vision range, and that means that they won't be able to fire at us, but even if one ship is visible, we can take advantage of that and start firing. So the Munchen's moving in now, we have these destroyers moving in. Okay, yeah, I think the day is hopefully going to be ours very shortly. 